This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. The market is terrific, and it's terrific because it really is balanced. And I think as a, as a real estate professional, balance is good. It means that both buyers and sellers are in a good position to achieve their goals. Real estate on the Suncoast, it's on the rise, but how long can we expect it to last? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more about real estate on the Suncoast in a moment, but first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with new details on the shooting last night involving a manatee deputy. A local man is dead, and the sheriff's deputy is on administrative leave in Bradenton. Sheriff Rick Wells says deputies responded to a domestic dispute at a gas station between 38-year-old Corey Mobley and his wife. Before deputies arrived, Mobley fled the scene. After a chase, deputies came face to face with him on 6th Street West. Sheriff Wells says Mobley repeatedly told deputies, quote, I have got a gun for you, refusing to show his hands, and was reaching into his waistband when the deputy fired four shots. He, he had told the cops that he had a gun, a gun for him. And then the cops had shot him twice, and he had got back up and walked towards the police officers, and they shot him two more times. Mobley died at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. Police searched Mobley and the area and did not find a gun. The investigation continues. A lot of effort has been put into dealing with bullying in the schools. What about the workplace? What about City Hall? Northport's assistant city manager is now under investigation. Danny Schultz has been placed on paid administrative leave after being accused by a city employee of bullying. Schultz oversees the city's human resources department. So the city attorney has been directed to hire an outside law firm to investigate. Northport's mayor says employees should come forward if they feel intimidated. I'm real proud of the employees who were able to step up. They definitely didn't have the faith to step up and complain about someone such as Mr. Schultz, who's, who's an administrator and actually supervises the HR department. The assistant city manager did not return our calls for comment. A Bradenton man continues to pressure Orlando authorities in the case of his missing daughter. Jennifer Kesey went missing without a trace in Orlando back in 2006. Today, the family continues the search. It's very difficult. Uh, Twelve years, you know, people say things get a little easier with time, and I, I don't think we find that in this situation, uh, mainly because of the frustration that goes along with it. And when you look back at what has happened over 12 years and where we are today, uh, we're nowhere, unfortunately. We're still the same as day three when they found her car. Tonight at 11, more on what is being done in Jennifer's case. The Northport Police Department is asking for the public's help after an attempted robbery at a community center. Take a look at this video. Police are hoping you'll recognize the two cars and the two men in the video. Detectives believe they may have information about an attempted robbery earlier this month at the Mullen Center on Kramer Way. If you have any information, call the Northport Police Department or Sarasota Crime Stoppers at 941-366 tips. We have been saying it's a tight race. Now we know how tight a new poll shows the race for the vacant House District 72 seat in a statistical tie between Democrat Margaret Good and Republican James Buchanan. A poll by St. Pete polls has Buchanan up 49.1 percent to Good's 46.1 percent, a difference of 3.7 percent within the margin of error. Libertarian Allison Foxall is at 1.6 percent, but Foxall has now set the Libertarian record for fundraising in Florida with just over $19,000. And just a reminder, the one and only time you can see all three candidates debate is right here on ABC 7 at 7 next Tuesday, January 30th. If you have any questions you want me to ask the candidates, just submit them to me on Twitter at Alan M. Cohn. You might recall our show a month ago when we had State Senator Greg Stubbe on to discuss his bill putting all Florida in the same time zone and getting rid of daylight savings time. This week, a Senate committee voted in favor of the plan to stop the semi-annual switch from standard to daylight savings time. The measure also seeks to put the Panhandle counties into the same time zone as the rest of the state. Currently, most of the Panhandle is now on central time with the rest of the state on the eastern time zone. 
hearing from members that represent the Panhandle, it's it's a it's a huge problem in business and scheduling meetings and all of that with the uh, hour difference in time. Even if the pro proposal receives approval from the full legislature, the U.S. Department of Transportation and Congress would both have to act for the changes to occur. A resolution seeking to maintain a decades-long oil drilling moratorium off the Florida coast is up for a vote in the state legislature. A House committee approved the non-binding measure, which would be extend, extend the drilling ban indefinitely. It's a generational blessing that's irreplaceable that we have the gift and honor of having it off our coast and it's in the line of national defense. If passed by the full legislature, the resolutions would also need to be agreed to by Congress. Now let's head over to ABC 7's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Bob. Well, looking out into the Gulf of Mexico from Casey Key Vantage Point, you can see the waves are up there a little higher today, and that's a result of a little breeze that came in, and you can see some high clouds occasionally moving in. Kind of disrupted the nice sunset. We saw some uh, sunset uh, as far as the clouds go and colors go, but uh, a lot of places are blocked out because of the clouds. 56 degrees right now, it's cooling down, and with the dew point temperature dropping too, it's going to make for a pretty chilly night, and especially tomorrow morning. As you send the kids off to school, it's going to be rather cold. The north northwest wind at 10 miles an hour, those winds will stay up 10 to 15 miles an hour. The pressure continues to rise at the surface. We don't anticipate any rainfall here, as that high pressure will continue to dominate our weather. Uh, what we do have, though, is a very active subtropical jet stream ripping across the northern Gulf of Mexico. This area of low pressure out in the Pacific Northwest will move off into the central plains, and then it will sweep a front down south. And along that front, an area of low pressure will develop, and that storm center will move in our direction on Sunday. And that means we could see a, a pretty good chance of some showers around on Sunday and maybe an isolated thunderstorm. It's 55 degrees in Jacksonville right now. 62 in Orlando, warmer though in Miami at 76 degrees and the evening planner looks like this uh, for the day planner tomorrow. 50 degrees to start things off right around 7 a.m. This is near the coast. Inland areas will be in the mid to upper 40s, but it feels like temperatures will be down in the low 40s, maybe even some upper 30s there. We will warm up not to seasonal averages, which is, uh, is 72 degrees for this time of year, but we'll warm up into the uh, mid to upper 60s for the most part. Quite a bit of dry air to the northwest of us. There's not a lot of moisture around, so we don't anticipate any rainfall here anytime soon. It'll stay dry right through most of the weekend, uh, although Sunday that rain chance is fairly high at 70 percent. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the timing of that rain because there's a lot of big door outdoor events taking place uh, over the uh, yeah, upcoming weekend. Don't win the weekend, Bob. And you know, looking at the long range forecast for Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis uh, for the Super Bowl, I know it's inside, but uh, you know, even to get to the game, we're talking like a high maybe seven degrees or something like that. Which I would imagine ruins a lot of the act outdoor yeah. activities that they would be planning. I would think so, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Right. And still to come, why is the real estate market on the Sunco is doing so well, and how long can we expect it to continue to do so? About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. The classic film Singing in the Rain is coming to the Player Center in a live stage show opening January 17th. All the dances and all the songs you've come to know and love, all a part of our wild Broadway series. Get your tickets now for this limited run by calling the players at 365-2494 or visit us online at theplayers.org. You too can be Singing in the Rain! To be able to just get my son here and not think about how we will pay for it, it just takes so much weight off of my family. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say 
I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. It seems like yesterday the Sarasota real estate market was in a world of hurt, foreclosures, short sales, and declining prices. Now the median price for a home on the Sun Coast was up another 7% in 2017, and many real estate professionals say the local market has never been in a better position, but at least one economist is warning of another recession, and it could be around the corner. Could a bubble burst again? ABC 7's Ray Collins takes a closer look. I think we're in a healthy, strong market. So yes, I would say it's the best I've ever seen it. Drayton Saunders is president of the region's largest real estate agency, Michael Saunders & Company. This is their new office in downtown Sarasota at the corner of Maine and Orange. How's this office working out? Oh, it's fabulous. It's uh, our flagship uh, in terms of kind of a new feel for an office. Saunders has this and 23 other offices across the region, and he says they are staying busy. He says the cold weather up north only made things hotter in local real estate. So this year with the cyclone bomb, a lot of great press about our region, we are starting off with a lot more activity than I have seen uh, in our typical January. So I think that bodes well for the market. Of the 7,000 agents in this region, one in 10 or about 700 work for Saunders. But the most successful agent in the area is not under his roof. Roger Pettengill of Coldwell Banker has led the region the past six years, selling over $100 million last year alone. Three, two. But how long can this last? Competitive advantage. In Earlier this month, a well-known economist warned of a recession coming. According to the Sarasota Herald Tribune, Hank Fishkind told a local business group that he's concerned that borrowing and the expansion could lead to higher interest rates. So could this lead to another real estate crash like the one we had 12 years ago? Well, Ray, things are different than 2006. Local attorney Dan Lobeck recalls that recession all too well. Though not a real estate professional, Lobeck runs a local group that keeps a close eye on growth in the area, and he thinks Fishkind is wrong. The factors that caused the bust 10 years ago are not in place today. Banks have tightened up their lending practices, so you're not going to see all this wave of defaults. Uh, flipping is not going crazy like it did in 2006. So. Uh, it just doesn't seem to me that a housing bust is on the horizon. Uh, the I get that question about the bubble all the time. And uh, it was interesting. I, I looked up the definition of a market bubble just so I'd be accurate. And it really requires two things. It requires a massive uh, run up in value and then a, a massive sell off. And so you'd have to ask, have we had a massive run up in value? And I don't think we really have. What we've had over the last 10 years is a recovery from the last bubble. And first it was recovering from prices that fell below what would have been statistically normal appreciation. And now we're, I think, in a very healthy appreciation cycle. And so no, I don't see us in a bubble. So for now, Saunders hopes word of mouth continues about this area. And as for his crystal ball? You know, they say that if you look too closely into a crystal ball, you eat glass. In Sarasota, Ray Collins, ABC7, your Suncoast News. In the moment, some of the top real estate mines in the area at the most valuable piece of real estate on the Suncoast, the trapezoid. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. 
I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make a splash! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USASwimmingFoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service, it's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Welcome back. It seems like just yesterday when the bubble burst, the foreclosures, short sales, and so many mortgages and homeowners underwater. Now the real estate market on the Sun Coast is booming. The sale of luxury homes during the second half of the year up a whopping 61%, a 9% increase in homes, $200,000 to $400,000. We could go on and on, but what does it all mean to you? And joining us for more is Kim Ogilvie of Michael Saunders and Company, Marty Black of West Villages, and Mary Doherty of the Gulf Coast Builders Exchange. Welcome to you all. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's start with the, the luxury market because that's what really popped up to me when I was doing my research, over 60%. How do you account for that? Right. Well, you know, we're in a very balanced market, but I think that the demand is really driving um, our market forward. But as long as sellers were willing to negotiate their prices, because I think that uh, price is definitely a function of this healthy market, then those buyers were coming off the sidelines and making deals in well, our luxury market. Let me ask you about that. I mm -hmm. mean, is there an average amount that sellers have had to come down in order to sell their home? Well, overall, I think our statistic in the Board of Realtors locally is about a 5 to 7 percent discount, but that typically is from the last listing price. So there could be as much in the luxury market as a 10 percent, maybe 15 percent reduction from that original list price to the price that it was listed for when the property actually received a contract. So, you know, there is a bit of a disparity there. Uh, Marty, prices are up uh, across the board. What about the mid-level market in terms of, of what you're seeing out there? Well, you know, West Villages, we're the one of the, this is our second year in the top five master plan communities selling in the United States. Lakewood Ranch joined us in the top five. So in the United States, you have two of the fastest selling master plan communities, and that's the meat of the market. You're selling mostly in that range. You're seeing some very strong price stabilization, and you're seeing a very strong interest in coming to this area for the culture, for the variety of activities. We now have, a, you know, with the World's Rowing Championships, the Atlanta Braves with the Orioles, we've got a mix. It's no longer just about sun and the beach. It's about a lot of other activities and a lot about it interest to draw from folks. where and what kind of income histories do a lot of the new buyers have a lot of the new buyers are, you know they're they're selling a home up north either in the northeast or the midwest it's still that same group of folks that we've seen for decades move to this area because they want to get away from the cold or they just want to come down here and relax and enjoy what we have to offer I mean, the museums the, uh, the the music the activities that we have around this community Mary you're in the unique position because you work with the builders uh, mm -hmm. you know, mostly in the commercial area but you know what's going on in in the uh, the home building area 
what are you seeing in terms of the health of the industry? Because for so many years after the economic collapse, these companies were hurting in a bad way. They were really hurting. Um, I had grown men in my office in tears because they had employees that had been with them for over 20 years. They knew they had children in college, and they were having to let them go. I mean, it was rough, and it was really rough in the commercial industry. So what we've seen is slow, steady growth sustainable growth. It's rare that um, I agree with Mr. Lobeck, but a healthier growth with the, you know, the banking, banks tightening up um, their regulations. And it has been slow and steady and sustainable. So in commercial follows rooftops, so we're thrilled about that type of growth in the region. Quick question, because we're talking about the increases in the middle market here, but what about the work for the available workforce? Uh, because a lot of the folks that were building homes, and I know immigration issues actually also play into this. Absolutely. So where are we at in terms of, of the labor force? That is our biggest challenge. That is our biggest challenge. We do not have enough of a labor force. Therefore, projects are being delayed and prices are rising. So that is our next challenge in the industry. Also, we have a wave of retirees in the industry. So that is our biggest challenge. So um, at the Builders Exchange, we actually conduct a construction rodeo. And we're trying to target those young people who may not you know, go on to college to go into the trades. OK, we have to take a quick break. We're just getting warmed up. And we'll have more on the local real estate market right after we check the first alert weather. Stay with us. Fact, the top three Marriott hotels in North and South America are on the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, according to a recent survey of 363 Marriott hotels, the Marriott at Grand National, the Marriott Shoals Hotel, and the Grand Hotel. And two of the top three Renaissance hotels are also on the trail, Ross Bridge in Birmingham and the Battle House in Mobile. Southern hospitality still rules. For reservations or information, visit rtjgolf.com slash resorts. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. I just need a second. Is your weight holding you back and affecting your health? Did you see this? Hmm? Your cousin had a heart attack. Really? Excess weight or obesity can be serious, but you can do something about it. Visit yourweightmatters.org. Download the free toolkit to prepare you to speak with a health care provider. Your weight does matter. Accept the challenge and take charge today. Visit yourweightmatters.org. It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. It's a battle of the sexes at the Sarasota Ballet. I'm Stephanie Roberts. On Suncoast View, we take a field trip to go behind the scenes at a ballet rehearsal to kick off their new season. A sex therapist stops by to teach us what three mistakes to avoid in our love lives. Plus, Music Compound is here to teach us how to play the ukulele, and Muse at the Ringling is in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. Our conversation on the local real estate market continues after we get the check of the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Thanks, Alan. We have a tornado safety day today. This is part of the National Weather Service plan to get everyone prepared for severe weather season, which really begins late in the winter and early spring for us. And then all summer long, we have the potential for severe weather. But tornado safety, plan early and practice often. Know your plan for all your different locations, where it be at work, play or at home you need to know where your safe room is because tornadoes can pop up very quickly and you need to seek shelter very quickly now uh, again the best place to be is in a room with a no windows an interior closet or a bathroom offers the best protection and know the tornado signs and a lot of times pets can actually pick up 
and sense the frequency of a tornado on the ground. I know that occurred during the tornadoes we had two years ago on January 17th, and people were always talking about their pets that were uh, very active uh, that particular morning when those tornadoes moved on through. Uh, Palmetto, beautiful shot of sunset. Uh, this from uh, Dennis, and we appreciate that photo. This was, again, uh, sunset earlier tonight at 6.05, and that was from last night's sunset. If you have a photo, send it to PIX, P-I-X, at mysuncoast.com. Well, the evening planner looks to be good, although cool. Uh, Rick just got back in, the reporter Rick Adams from the uh, doing reports. He said, can you warm it up a little bit? It's cold. The wind is really blowing uh, pretty heavily now out of the uh, north and northwest on the waters, and that keeps things uh, much colder right there. And uh, looks as though we will see uh, satellite and radar imagery continue to show very active subtropical jet stream. You see it ripping over North Florida right now. Some showers associated with a little weak upper air disturbance. And this is a data void area. We don't have a lot of data reports here. Uh, in fact, just uh, buoy data and ship reports. And a lot of times the little systems can pop up in the Gulf and bring some rain our way. But I don't think this is going to have much of a chance with that high pressure ridge so strong right now at the surface. And it's going to be marching uh, down across our state and off into the Gulf of Mexico. And Alan, again, is uh, interested in that. I think he's watching it right now. <laughs> Hi, Alan. How are you? Okay, there you go. Back to the weather, back to the maps. It's a quick little tease, you see. Subliminal hint there that Alan's coming up pretty soon. Some clouds and showers, uh, not showers, but clouds to the north of us right now. We've had a few brief areas of clouds now and again throughout the day today. Uh, 56 degrees, and the dew point is at 46. The humidity at 69%. And the high today was 71. That's a rare occurrence. We have the high actually where it's supposed to be. The low this morning, that too, uh, running pretty close to average. 85, the record set back in 1999. Well, 62 in Orlando, 76 in Miami. It's still warm there, 69 in Key West. And temperatures right along the water, you see that a little bit cooler there. 59 in Braden and Cortez at 58. The Gulf water temperature down at 60. A bit warmer in inland places like Arcadia and Northport. You're still at 64 degrees. And tomorrow's forecast will start off in the upper 40s to low 50s. It will be a very chilly start and will warm into the upper 60s tomorrow for highs. That's slightly below average, but we should see a mixture of sun and clouds. It should not be... Too terribly bad in the afternoon. It should be rather nice out there. And the future cast showing those high, thin clouds kind of thinning out later on tomorrow night and especially on and through Friday. We'll see a return to that easterly wind, too, and that will warm us up. On Friday, we're talking highs back into the mid-70s there. And as far as current temperatures go, not too bad in places like Kansas City, St. Louis, and Asheville, all 37 degrees right now. That cold Arctic air, though, is getting ready and set to spill southward over the next couple of days, 11 in Minot, it's uh, the wind chill, it feels like 19 in Minneapolis. As I said earlier, at the soup for the Super Bowl, the high in uh, to single digits, it looks like, on that Sunday. Uh, northeast winds at 20 knots, and then they'll subside somewhat at 15 to 10 knots later on in the day. Choppy conditions out on the waters to start things off. Here's the seven-day forecast then. 68, a little bit below average Thursday. Friday, we warm up on a more easterly wind. And then a southeasterly wind gets some moisture in uh, an advance of the cold front that arrives on Sunday. Brings with it a pretty good chance for some showers. Right now the timing appears to be later on in the day on Sunday. And then it slides down on Monday. And we cool down just a little bit. Alan will be back with his guests right after this. ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Watch ABC7 wherever you are, on our live stream, on mysuncoast.com, on the ABC7 My Sun Coast app, powered by the iAssociates, providing sight for life, featuring traffic maps and live radar, dining with recipes, and My Sun Coast restaurant guide. Visit mysuncoast.com, click on the Apps tab to download the ABC7 My Sun Coast app for Apple and Android. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. 
Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%, that's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Welcome back. We're talking about the booming real estate market on the Sun Coast, and joining us for more is Kim Ogilvie of Michael Saunders and Company, Marty Black of West Villages, and Mary Doherty of the Gulf Coast Builders Exchange. And Kim, why don't you tell me about the average person selling and the average person buying these million-dollar homes? Right. Well, a lot of our market right now is driven by the uh, baby boomers who are either pre-retirement or retirement selling their large waterfront homes, say in excess of 4,000 square feet on the barrier islands or west of the trail, and looking to experience more of life versus, you know, having a large home to care for. Children have gone empty nesters. So there's a real migration to downtown condominiums where there is such a demand. I mean, I know there's a lot of inventory that will be coming online with new development, but I sincerely think that that will be soaked up. So let me ask you this. The, the downtown condominiums, are, are more people buying them who are downsizing from those Barry Island, uh, Island homes, or is it people moving down from the north east or midwest it's really both i mean we have an influx of buyers coming from the northeast looking for this tax-friendly state warmer climate the culture etc but a lot of our business we're seeing uh, from those sellers who are just wanting to downsize have an easier lifestyle so it's really a balance Marty, when we're talking about the the mid market i guess one of the interesting things unfortunately would be is that a lot of a lot of people who are fairly close to retirement were totally devastated by the economic collapse. They lost a lot of their retirement savings, and if they still worked, a lot of them make 40, 50 percent less what, than what they used to. So you would think that that would really impact your market, and because people, yes, they've made their money, some money back, but many have not come all the way back. A, a lot of them haven't come all the way back, but I'll tell you, we're seeing typically over 50 percent of the buyers are paying cash. I mean, it is still a substantial portion of, of the buyers in the market, and, and I don't think it really is, you know, low, middle, or high. There's still a substantial folks that have a lot of investment they want to bring to Florida. They want to be in Sarasota. They want to be close to the, the beach. They want to be close to an, an airport that gets you anywhere in the world. And you want to come in and have amenities year-round, and that's what we have to offer. I think one of the things that we see also is it's a mix of communities. You're seeing folks that are going into the townhouses. You're seeing folks going into the golf course communities. Folks that are going in some gated communities, but other folks that are actually looking for a community with mixed income levels that have families and have kids and, and looking for that sense of place and sense of community. Mary, we're mostly talking about the, the, uh, the home market uh, right now, but you know, if you move down here and you, uh, you're, you buy a new home, you also need a place to shop and you need uh, all those other places. What about the commercial market? Are we seeing the same kind of gains that we're seeing in the residential area? Absolutely. And I was actually at that fish kind presentation and he does expect that to slow down over the next couple of years. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with him. And even the scenario that you painted, I would see perhaps that would affect folks with second homes. But you look at Bob Harrigan's weather forecast and people want to be down here. So the commercial industry is still healthy right now. And what we're also seeing is like the hotel markets. So the major markets, Orlando, Las Vegas, they are starting to cool off a bit, so it depends on where you look. 
but now those investors are coming off the fence and looking at secondary markets such as this area. So I wanted to make that segue uh, talking about what uh, economists are saying that you, you are starting to hear more and more economists talk about a looming recession. Obviously we're seeing interest rates starting to climb uh, because the economy is pretty good but that does complicate things for people who want to uh, buy homes. How is that going to affect both the high end and the middle high end of, of the markets? Ken? Well, nine out of ten of our buyers are paying cash right now, so I just we just don't feel the effect of that overall here in this marketplace in the luxury end over million dollar sales. Well, I guess that tax cut is having a little bit of an advantage here. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think if you're up north and you're paying exorbitant taxes, and you're only allowed the deductions that have just put, been put into place, you know, perhaps we are a bit of a relief on that. Well, let me ask you that that question, Marty, because when they were debating the GOP tax plan. You had uh, a lot of folks, both Republicans and Democrats, from those northeastern states complain about the uh, the, the uh, reduction in the homeowner's mortgage uh, interest you know, rate deduction. Interest, and is that going to result in even more northeasterners or people from California relocating because uh, it's real, they're really going to be at a financial disadvantage to stay? We're not at a rate of growth in this state or even in our area that's, that's excessive. It, it's a sustainable growth rate. I think we'll continue to see that pace. I don't see it accelerating a lot. Um, and we've got a build out in West Villages that our, our models take us for 30 to 40 years. We anticipate little drops as you go through. It's, it's natural and a correction in the market. You know, when folks say a recession and they talk about a bubble occurring, what we went through 10 years ago, I don't think can be replicated because of the regulations that have put in place. But I think more importantly, everybody remembers it still. And so folks are a little bit more cautious. You know, you still see a little bit of dickering on price. You're not seeing, you know, people coming with five bids and people build, dr drumming up the prices artificially in the homes. It's still a buyer-seller negotiation process. Mm -hmm. And as long as we have that, it's a balanced market. It's, it's the market conditions working. Mary, what about the stability of the builders out there? Because we lost so many companies during that economic downturn. Uh, I would imagine other companies have popped up, but you know this is not an easy business to get into and sustain. Right, and it was primarily survival of the fittest. So the companies that remained really were the ones who were here for generations and the strongest you know, of companies with best business models. And they're here to stay. This is their community. This is where they're raising their families. So they made it through the recession, and you know now they'll make it through this time probably stronger and smarter. What, are, what is the biggest thing that builders are concerned about going labor. forward? Workforce and labor. That is the primary challenge for the industry right now. We could probably do another show on this we because that, that does raise the question about uh, a whole lot of things in terms of the labor force and immigration and what the uh, builders are doing in terms of you know going to our legislators in Congress in terms of not doing things that will make that job more difficult. Right. A pathway. Oh, actually, go ahead. actually drives prices up because the cost of labor, then you have to compete with other skilled labor pieces. We compete across the country to bring more labor here. We're driving up basic costs of goods and services, including homes and amenities, and it'll, it, it gets into a cycle that we think is not good long term for our state and our region or for our country. Uh, Kim, uh, we, we, we have about 90 seconds left, but I do want to ask you this question because another provision of the tax plan that just went into effect makes it easier for people to bring their money back home from offshores. So here's the question. Is there enough inventory in the high-end market for the people out there who may want to bring that money home and buy new homes here on the Sun Coast? I think so. I, I think that it... Uh, our existing inventory of, of homes is limited. What we're probably going to see, even though labor costs are increasing, we do have some incredible vacant waterfront lots now that are available. I think you're going to start seeing people uh, build more. I mean, everyone wants new. Right now, new is the, is the real thing. So uh, I think even though those labor prices are increasing and rising, you're going to see these A-front, A-plus waterfront lots start to be built on because of our limited uh, inventory. Okay, we have to take a quick break and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. 
For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. Thank you. You know, fortunately, this was my first job out of college, so I was able to uh, come back home and work in my hometown. I wore two hats. I was sports director and I was a news anchor. Uh, I did that for a few years and then decided to go full time into news. Well, I love our team here at ABC7. We have a great mix and it really is a great mix of, of personalities, of experience that meshes really well into a really strong team. I'm Scott Dennis and I'm here for you. ABC7 News at 7 weeknights. And our guest join us right now for final thoughts. So, Kim, what is when we're talking about the high-end market here on the Sun Coast and Sarasota, what is the one thing you want our viewers right now to take away from this conversation? Well, I think that Sarasota has been discovered. I mean, we are no longer a best-kept secret uh, on the map, on the globe. So um, now's a good time to buy. I think that um, um, while inventory is the way it is, you're in a very balanced market. I think we're seeing lots and lots of uh, baby boomers and uh, people who are in pre-retirement come now and buy, say, five years ahead of when they want to retire because they realize, I think, what Sarasota is going to be and uh, prices could get tighter and it's, it's just a good time to buy. You know, Marty, uh, the one thing that I noticed in my own neighborhood, when we moved in, there were so many homes that uh, were foreclosed on, closed up, in disrepair, and one by one by one, they went away. Um, and, you know, our community is built out. You, you're, you're building as much as you can. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I, is, a, is a takeaway is we've got multi-million dollar investments. We're building Atlanta Brave Spring Training. It's $110 million for that. It's an infusion of jobs. It's an infusion of, of an opportunity to draw more folks to the community. And building a sense of community in place, continue to keep Sarasota, Northport, West Villages, Venice, those areas special. People continue to come, and that's healthy for us. So, Mary, that brings up the question, how stretched are builders right now in terms of having, we talked about labor, but everything builders need to, to, to build. There's not a problem with the supply chain. The supply chain is fine. The focus is primarily on labor. But, you know, let's just assume that Hang Fish Kind is correct, and we have a two-year window here. You know, so we've had the, the warning shot. We need to expect that our elected officials will make good policy decisions, we'll be economically competitive, and that we attract the workforce we Sounds need. Sounds like another show that we have to do. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on the Sarasota Teachers contract negotiations. So it's been 30 years since Sarasota County teachers walked the picket lines, but now they are protesting the state of contract negotiations with the school district. The Sarasota County uh, teachers are up for at least a 3% pay raise. Here is what some of you had to say. Kathy says, the impact of a good education lasts for a lifetime. Teachers should be paid appropriately and given the tools they need to keep their classrooms operating 
in the best manner possible. Sarah says, yes, they should get a raise. A 3% raise does not even cover the cost of living increase for a year here. These people are spent eight hours a day with our most prized accomplishments, our kiddos. And then there's Steve, who says, if they strictly teach subjects, yes. If they are pushing Islam and progressive views, then definitely not. And the kids would be better off homeschooled. Pushing Islam, Steve. Really? Steve, what do you think is going on? Where did you read that? Where? Ah, got it. If you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your current app doesn't work, it's expired. Just go to the App Store and re-download it by searching for WWSB or my Sun Coast. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Kim Ogilvy is with Michael Saunders and Company. Marty Black is with West Villages. And Mary Doherty is with the Gulf Coast Builders Exchange. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather. Plus, will special counsel Robert Mueller interview the president on Russia's involvement in the 2016 presidential election? We'll be right back. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama Black Belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, fishing, or biking and hiking. Or play the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy the flavors of the Black Belt. Book your adventure at our lodges or stay in the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. I'll be right back. of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on our first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Alan, once again, uh, weather headlines read like this. It's going to be a chilly start to tomorrow morning. We'll have wind chills, low 40s, upper 30s in some inland areas with temperatures dropping down into the mid to upper 40s there, uh, right around 50 degrees at area beaches. And then uh, look for dry conditions to persist. We're not anticipating any rainfall. I know you spoke about the rain. We saw, and uh, now that rain has since moved on. A cold front though arrives Sunday. It will be back. Showers in the forecast for Sunday. It looks like right now the models are trending toward that area of low pressure staying to the north of us a little bit more so. And if that were the case, that were the, that's where the bulk of the precipitation would be. But we will still see rain, no doubt, on Sunday. And right now the very active subtropical jet stream. High pressure keeping things pretty quiet on the surface anyway across the entire southeast United States. We have this very fast moving stream of air and known as a subtropical jet, which continues to move overhead and bring us uh, some cloudiness down again. But for the most part, uh, we are anticipating this westerly flow to continue, at least in the upper levels of the atmosphere overnight with a northeasterly wind beginning tomorrow. Uh, 56 degrees, our current temp. The dew point is uh, low at 46. Winds out of the north northwest at 10. And that pressure is up there at 30, 20 and continues to rise. Now, the high today was 71, 
The low this morning was 53, and that was one degree warmer than our average, which is 52. Uh, current temperature is already down to 56 degrees here, uh, 76. So uh, Miami hasn't changed much. I have to check that uh, reporting station to make sure it's okay. Uh, temperatures in the upper 60s. We have a few clouds forecast tomorrow. Uh, we'll start off in the upper 40s to low 50s, but uh, some high variety of clouds moving in overhead. Should be a real nice afternoon after a pretty chilly start. And as far as your future cast goes, we are calling for uh, some mid to upper level cloudiness moving across the area. And then that kind of thinning out a bit on uh, late Thursday and into Friday. You'll notice we'll return with that easterly wind. We'll start to get some cumulus clouds along the east coast. Not much change for, uh, chance for rain here, uh, but we will watch this a little disturbed area of weather uh, developing over the western Gulf of Mexico as that energy comes down from the Midwest and from the central plain states and eventually develops into a low in the Gulf. Well, temperatures right now, the coldest readings are in Toronto now at 19 there and 20 in Minot. And as far as the wind chill goes, it feels like 11 there. Minneapolis 19, 17 in Cleveland and uh, all the way to 22 in Boston tonight. That's the wind chill factor. Tomorrow's high temperatures will be warming up upper 50s in Kansas City and St. Louis looking pretty good there. Detroit a little bit cooler, 38 and Atlanta will get up to 56 degrees. Now, there's a couple of more blasts of cold air coming. This one comes down on Sunday, kind of scoots on by. And then next week uh, for Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be bitterly cold uh, for folks in Minneapolis. There'll be a lot of them there for the Super Bowl. Uh, looks like uh, Saturday, bitterly cold temperatures. Sunday, the same. And then uh, down south, we'll get cool here, too, to start February off, it looks like. As far as boating is concerned, a bit breezy out there. Choppy conditions. Seas running two feet uh, by the end of the day. Two to four foot seas uh, early on. Well, the forecast for Thursday, 68 for your high, 74. A little warmer on Friday. And then the showers move in on Sunday, it looks like. And a 70% chance for mainly rain. Uh, looks like there could be an isolated thunderstorm, but I think that'll be closer to that area of low pressure north. 72 on Monday and just slightly cooler for Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Prime time headlines with Alan coming up next. Stick around. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. I do not love him. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks, but you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. 
Checking primetime headlines, the Russia investigation getting closer to President Trump now reaching into the president's cabinet. There are now indications that special counsel Robert Mueller will seek answers from the president himself. ABC's Megan Hughes has the latest details from Washington. President Trump brushing off questions about the Russia investigation at a meeting with the country's mayors. Mr. President, will you sit down with Robert Mueller? Sources with knowledge of the matter telling ABC News special counsel Robert Mueller has indicated to Trump's lawyers that Mueller's office will seek answers directly from the president. It's sort of proceeding up the chain. It would appear. All roads, all leads, all lines of inquiry lead to Donald Trump. Mueller's team has made it clear they want to question the president directly on two topics, the firings of former FBI Director James Comey and National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. This as the White House reacts to new reports the president asked acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe how he voted during an Oval Office meeting. I can't get into the details of what was discussed. I wasn't there. Lawmakers reacting to Mueller's approach. There is now a credible case of obstruction of justice against Donald Trump. Trump. Mueller's team reportedly requested Justice Department emails to see whether Comey's firing was an attempt to obstruct the investigation. That's according to a source told of the request. They also interviewed Comey, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, and other key members of the Trump administration. As of last June, the president seemed willing. So if Robert Mueller wanted to speak with you about that, you I would be, be glad to, to, to tell him exactly what I just told you, Jeff. But asked in January, the president was noncommittal. We'll see what happens. I mean, certainly I'll see what happens. But uh, when they have no collusion and nobody's found any collusion at any level, uh, it seems unlikely that you'd even have an interview. Still to come, former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon is expected to be interviewed by the special counsel's team. Megan Hughes, ABC News, Washington. Larry Nasser, a former doctor for USA Gymnastics, will spend the rest of his life behind bars for sexually assaulting young athletes. A judge gave Nasser up to 175 years in prison. More than 160 victims spoke in court about being abused by Nasser. The judge spoke to Nasser after and after Nasser spoke to the victims. My honor and privilege to sentence you. Because, sir, you do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. I just signed your death warrant. There are no words that can describe the depth and breadth of how sorry I am for what has occurred. I will carry your words with me for the rest of my days. Nasser was taken out of the courtroom to the sounds of applause. Four new members named to baseball's Hall of Fame tonight, Chipper Jones, Jim Tomey, Vladimir Guerrero and Trevor Hoffman to be inducted this summer in Cooperstown. Jones was an eight-time All-Star third baseman for the Atlanta Braves. Tomey hit 612 home runs, putting him eighth on the career list and played mostly for the Cleveland Indians. Guerrero was elected in his second try. Hoffman, a former San Diego Padres closer, had 601 saves, second to all-time Mariano Rivera's 652. Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, both tainted by the steroid scandal, edged up, but again, fell far short. That's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.